a lot of people ring me and ask me, Chris, what bushes do I need to replace in my car? And the answer is, I don't really know until I inspect the car. And we have a few methods of testing cars for worn bushes or faulty ball joints and things like that. My suggestion to most people is to get your car to a good quality suspension supplier and get them to put the car on the hoist and they should know the series of tests that they use to determine whether the parts need replacing. We do this here and we're pretty rigorous in our testing to find out whether the customer does need the bushes replacing or not. In a lot of instances the manufacturers of the particular vehicle make good quality bushes However, some of them really fail and they fail badly and prematurely and really need attention immediately. Um, here's a bush here we've changed in the back of this Ford BF. Now, normally these bushes would last probably determined on if you're towing or the car's high performance with a, with a heavy horsepower output. This bush would need replacing. You replace it from the original rubber and we use a polyurethane bush and you can see the difference that the poly would be a much firmer bush and would last probably 10 to 1 to the rubber bush and give no issues at all. Most manufacturers have these weak links, they could be in the rear suspension as we see here, a lot of them are in the front suspension and the ones of the front suspension are the, are the ones that really need attention straight away because if the front ones aren't done we see heavy tyre degradation and bad tyre wear due to irregular wheel alignments, figures, because the bushes aren't locating the suspension in their right position. We've got a car on the hoist now, we might stick our heads under there and get a few bars and do a few tests and see if we can actually see any movement and show you some of the bushes that we replace. And here we are now, we've got the car up on the four poster hoist, I have my trusty pry bar with me and we're going to have a visual inspection of the whole front end checking lower control arm inner pivots, caster rod bushes, sway bar links and as much as we can to get a general idea of what condition the vehicle is in to actually see whether it's worthwhile doing a wheel alignment or not. So we'll start with the lower control arm inner pivots and I'll just put my bar in here and we can actually see this lower inner pivot here has a hell of a lot of movement and that needs to be reported to the customer. That's not in very good condition at all. And when a bush moves like that, it takes the wheel alignment figures with it. So you can see what I'm trying to say is there's no point in doing a wheel alignment because it can't fix faulty bushes. The bushes have to be replaced first. As we're looking around on this side, I'm looking at the age and the condition of the bushes. Looks like someone's tried to put some caster rod bushes in here. That's fine. I'll grab the sway bar link and here we go. Immediately I found a loose sway bar link which needs to be reported. We go on to the other side of the car here now. I can see that the sway bar D-link bush is knocking. That'll have to be reported. So you can see for a quick five minutes of my time and maybe half an hour of the customer's time, we've found some issues that need to be addressed. Okay, here we are now with the same customer's car and we're at the back and we're gonna check all the rear end diff bushes now. So once again, I'll get my bar up under here and we'll just check the this is a live axle car by the way, it's not an independent late model Commodore, it's an early model Commodore but it just gives you a bit of an idea of what can and can't go wrong with these things. It's quite a simple layout. And we'll just check the upper control arm, trailing arm bushes. And we'll get our bar in here, we'll just check this. And as you can see, those bushes are just about gone. They have an excessive amount of movement there. And you know, some of the bushes were made by the manufacturers, they had slots in them, in the bushes. And some of them are meant to move that much these slots are called voids and the manufacturer puts some of these voids in the bushes to quieten down some of the road noises that they used to incur. Um, they also made police car bushes or cop car bushes we call them in the old FE2 suspension range and they were a solid rubber bush, much better bush, much better design. But as you can see uh, they got to go, they've, um, they've probably done 200, 300,000 kilometres and uh, they've, done their, they've done their life's work. The other thing you might want to notice too, as this bush moves backwards and forwards, it's actually rotating the diff up and down because the bush is not located properly, it's probably delaminated or ripped. And as the bush moves backwards and forwards, it's taking the tail shaft or the pinion angle with it. And this is a classic problem with Commodores causing tail shaft vibrations off the line from a standing start. 
So as you can see, replacing most of these bushes will make a huge difference to the way the car drives, feels and runs down the highway. OK, so here we are now. We're under a Commodore and as we were before, we were looking at the rear end of a VA Falcon and the problems that they have with axle tramp and the bushes delaminating. So that's BA, BF and in fact Four Territory have that same bush in the back. The GM product has the same issue. Here we are on the rear end of the car and the rear end is located to the floor by these cross member to floor mount bushes. And these bushes, I'll just show you one here, come from GM and the original ones are rubber and they have a void in the bush, a slot and what happens with that bush is it starts to tear and you can actually see this one is tearing and at least another centimetre longer than when it was brand new you can see that from the back it's a void and it's starting on the other side it's starting to rip we have two options of fixing this for the mum and dad car or the bread and butter car Fulcrum have come up with a bush which is called a void filling bush and this void filling bush corrects the tear still gives you the nice comfort ride of the rubber bush but the void filler goes in to stop that bush moving and in fact making the rear end jump up and down. We have one for the lower and we have a void filler for the upper. Complete, completely locating and filling all the voids in that bush and keeping it in its housing and stopping all the movement. And that bush will be then pressed into the K-frame and bolted into place. For the high performance heads we have another option on top of this bush. This is the bush we would use in a car that was either stroked or had a supercharger on it or in fact turbocharger. This is a solid bush, beautifully machined up as you can see. And it gets rid of those voids completely. A little bit more road noise, just a tad, not too much. But that takes the care of those voids for high, high end horsepower cars. Once again, we drop the K-frame out of the car and we put that bush and insert it into the K-frame and that'll stop all the axle tramp issues and towing issues from knocking noises on acceleration and de-acceleration that one might experience.